Yes, guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another episode of Five Things We Learned. This is a show where we go through all the major talking points of the last Chelsea game. This one being Chelsea won into Milan at Stamford Bridge, our last pre-season game. And thankfully, we didn't end on a defeat, just because I think it spares us a lot more um, of debates and scaremongering and, oh, Chelsea are going down on the Maresca and all of that crap. I actually think today, um, yesterday's game was a little bit of an improvement from what I saw in the last few games. And that was going to be my main point. Gradual improvements I saw in this game compared to the last few ones. I think we're a lot more solid defensively. I think we're a lot smarter in possession as well. We didn't look as naive as we were looking in the last few matches. Kind of just unlucky that Sommer was just having such a good game. Because he was getting tested a lot in the match. There weren't even necessarily howlers that we were missing. Just good shot stopping from the goalkeeper. But all in all, I, I do think it was a much better performance from us than what we've seen before. Usually we're giving up shots and we're giving up chances left, right and centre. I do feel like we managed to neutralise Inter Milan to a point in this game. Now obviously, it is pre-season so you can only take things with like a pinch of salt both pos both positively and negatively but genuinely i look at that match and just think jan sommer was on a madness and that's the only reason but um why we left with a draw instead of left uh, leaving with a win sorry this heat is literally getting to me but yeah jan sommer is literally the difference between a win and a draw in that game and it says a lot about what a good goalkeeper can do for you in it but that was literally the difference. Defensively, didn't think we were that bad. Obviously, we conceded um, a really silly goal to give away. But I also think that was the only clear-cut chance that Inter Milan had. Correct me if I'm wrong in the chat. I know they had three shots on target. But in terms of like actual clear-cut opportunities, it was only Turam's goal. And I'm not even looking at the defence too much for that goal. Obviously, like it plays a part. Fafana just freezes out of nowhere and Colwell doesn't mark his man well enough. But it's the midfield, first off. I think that guy who ran through our entire midfield was actually a centre-back. Again, correct me if I'm wrong in the chat. I've never seen that guy before, just some lanky brother. But um, he ran through our entire team. I think his name was Bisek. I think that, I think that was him. And he just ran through unmarked. No one even bothered to track him. And that's the whole reason why I was even able to get that pass off. That's the reason why Fafana now had to make a decision and didn't know what decision to make. Because he didn't think he was even going to get to that situation in the first place. So that was going to be my second point. The midfield. You've got to close down players a lot quicker than that. That player had all the time and space in the world to make that run with the ball. Unchallenged. Nobody went near him. That was the problem, and that's the reason why we conceded. I don't look at the defence too much for it, even though I can hear the arguments that maybe Fafana could have done a little bit better. Definitely not looking at the goalkeeper. Thankfully, I didn't even notice too much about Robert Sanchez in goal. And you know what? That, to me, is a positive. If I'm not noticing the goalkeeper, he hasn't done anything bad. That's a W in my eyes. But, yeah, midfield really should have done better for that one. Thankfully, on the ball, I think... The midfield did pretty well. Um, Caicedo improved things in the second half. I don't think Enzo had as good of a second half as he did in the first half. Dewsbury Hall, I didn't really notice too much either. But for what I remember in the game, like we didn't make a lot of silly mistakes in the midfield. My problem with our progressive play was... The problem has always been it was the, the wings. The wings. Especially on the left-hand side. Like, I saw someone say that watching Mudrick raises Madueke's stocks by itself. And I understand it, because even when you look at Noni's game, I don't think he was outstanding, I don't think he did anything crazy, but I compare his performance to Mudrick, and I just think, okay, well, at least Noni was trying to take players on. Mudrick, that first half cameo was awful. It was so bad. And thankfully, like, at least the second half was a bit better. You could argue that he should have got an assist or two as well. So there was some moments in his game. My problem is, like, I, I can never hear the argument for players just being moments players. You have to be a good player. 
You have to be a good player overall because the game's 90 minutes. It's not one minute. It's not one moment. A moment might define a game, but like there's also another 89 minutes to be played. And for me, Mudrick's performance just wasn't good enough. And coming off this preseason, I need to see so much more from him. Because again, if I do the comparison with Nonny, if you ask me who I think is more likely to make something in a game, it's going to be Nonny. If you're going to ask me who I think is more likely to successfully dribble past players, it's Nonny. If, I, if you ask me who's more likely to score a goal, it's Nonny. That's why even when it comes to criticism of Nonny, because he does have his frustrating moments. Same as Mudrik. It's a bit more few and far between with him. Mudrik is just straight frustrating. So I really hope he has a good season this year. We need him to have a good season because the excuses are genuinely dead in the water now. Now you're looking at him and it's just, you're a £62 million player. I need to see some £62 million performances. Sooner rather than later, please, I beg. But at least he had a better second half. At the very least, he had a better second half. And also now we've got Neto coming and potentially Jao Felix. So the competition for that position is only going to get stronger. Another W in my eyes. Um, but yeah, that also feeds into my other point where we kind of need the bit of cutting edge in the final third. And that was that was noticeable throughout the game. Like we did well to progress the ball as soon as we got to the final third. Indecisive, ineffective, or just Jan Sommer doing Jan, Jan Sommer things. It was always one of the three. And Jan Sommer's best moments were more second half based rather than first in general. So, and that also happened once we brought Nkunku on, while we brought Jackson on, and when we brought Cole Palmer. Which is also why I'm not even, like, that annoyed that we lacked the cutting edge. It's just something that I observed in the first half. Like, we, we didn't look that clinical, we didn't look as decisive. Obviously, it's because our strongest players weren't there, but it's something I noticed with the players that were on the pitch. Hopefully they can improve that when the conference leagues are, arrives because for a lot of those players that were starting in the attacking positions, you're probably playing in the conference league. So you got the the best opportunity to pick up those performances because you're going to be playing no names like Narnia and Hogwarts away. So go do your thing. Go do your thing. Um, to end on a positive though, I'm going to talk about that Ugo Chukwu cameo because, wow... Well, I did not expect him to come off the bench and start hooping like that. It was ridiculous. Like, he showed good defensive work. He showed good offensive work. Smashed in an equaliser. There was easy, even some nutty little flicks left, right and centre. Like, I didn't know you had that in you, Leslie. But, fair play. Fair play. What a cameo. Um, hope to see a bit more of you in the Conference League. Because, yeah. That you were moving like prime Yaya Torre for like 10 minutes. <laughs> that that was crazy. But shout out to Leslie. Um, we needed a hero and you stepped up. Leslie, 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 Leslie. And we'll see what you do in the conference league. I'm not too sure um how stacked our midfield depth is. Because maybe someone will have to go on loan. But good cameo. Really good cameo. Um, maybe being pulled out of the Olympics team got, got to him or something. And if it did, fair play. Use that as motivation. But all in all, gradual improvements throughout pre-season. Mainly worried about our centre-backs and the lack of communication and, at some points, intelligence as well. But I like that we also tested ourselves this pre-season. We played the Scottish, English, Spanish and Italian champions. It was never going to be easy, easy. Like, I do think Celtic, we still should have done a lot better. Like, losing 4-1 is... Yeah, yeah we're, we're not going to excuse that one. But not panicking about pre-season at all. For anyone who has been panicking throughout pre-season, please go outside. The weather's nice. Go and enjoy the summer. Because clearly the heat's getting to you. And we'll see what happens against Man City. I'm very excited. I know everyone's, like, a little bit shook. I know it is Man City, Four Peters, all of that. But... Part of me just thinks I'm, I'm glad to get that fixture over and done with. Get that game finished and I don't have to worry about them till early February or whenever we go to the Etihad. Fine. Deal. I'll take it now and run. But until then, we'll see what happens. Jao Felix should be here by the next um, five things we learn. And who knows? We might beat Man City. <laughs> 
We'll see what happens. Big up to everybody that's locked in. Hit the like button, subscribe. Up the chels.